Hello everybody, this is a tutorial on how to get started with I Wanna Be The Guy fan game making. So even if you have never opened Game Maker before, this is a perfect time to get started. In this video I'll be using Not A Needle Engine. So over here we have the main workspace, which will be doing most of the work. And right here on the side we have the library, which is the game assets, such as sprites. And the sprites are the images. So, for instance, the star. This is just the image. Uh, don't worry uh, too much about the sprites for now. When you feel ready, you can start adding custom graphics. And I don't, I don't want to go too in-depth in this tutorial and overload you with information. So do check out Clayson's written tutorial, which will be linked in the description when you are ready to do so. And then objects. These are the things that you actually place in the rooms. And these will follow code that you write in the objects. So sprites are the images and the objects are the things that you place in the room. And then rooms, this is where you'll be doing most of the work. So we already have things prepared here. So here is the test rooms, such as this room, All these rooms though you should not worry about that we have already have a stage prepared for you which is my stage open this folder and double click on our my stage one and bring up this window so this is the room editor we're going to be mostly in the objects tab here which you can do you can click to bring up the menu of objects so all all these folders are the standard objects you'll see in Yo-Yo's engine. And then new is all the new stuff we added in the Not a Needle engine. And to place things, all you have to do is simply select an object. So we're going to select object block here. We're going to select that. And now we can start placing in the room. As you can see. You can also hold down shift control to be able to place many, as well as shift right click to be able to delete them. For some reason, they're different hotkeys. No one knows why. And if you want to change the grid snap, it's up here. So right now it's snapped to 32 by 32. You can change this to, for instance, 16 by 16. And you can, for instance, place them on a 16 pixel grid. And if you want to move them arbitrarily, you can hold down Alt. Now you can move them wherever you want. So I'm just going to place some things here. And this is the player start object. So I'm going to move that down to the platform so the player will start on the platform. Okay, let's open the game and see how this looks. All right, so here we are. Let me just start a new file. And the rights portal, that's where your stage is. You're going to move in. You'll immediately notice that the blocks are invisible. That is because the block object is just the actual block code. Uh, to add the graphics, we have to use tiles. So let me just close the game again. And here we have the tiles window. So again, you just click uh, down here, actually. Here we have some tiles prepared for you the test room tiles. I'm going to click on that. And here we have the tile window. And we're going to select this tile because these squares are empty. And then we can just put these on top of the blocks. If you put them elsewhere, then you will be able to pass through these blocks. So if, there, if there's no object block on top of the tiles, then it won't actually serve as a tile. Let's open the game again. Go into our portal here. You can see now our blocks are actually visible. And as I showed you, these uh, tiles have no object block on top of them, so you can actually just pass through them. All right, so I'm going to delete these and I'm going to just start making, honestly. Let's say we want to make a room that goes kind of like this. 
Maybe I have to go up. Maybe jump over here. Fall down. Again, I'm holding down shift and control to be able to place lots of blocks like this. Move down and then we'll have the exit be right there. So now we're going to start placing tiles. Now you don't actually need blocks to be there to place tiles. So even though there's no blocks here, I can still fill these this with tiles. You do want to minimize the amount of blocks that you do put in the in the room. It's just good habit to do that. So if you don't need to place a block somewhere, then just place a tile instead. If you do want there to be tiles there. And I'm going to move over. You start over there. And let's start placing some objects here. So we have lots of stuff to choose from. Almost too much stuff here. Let's put a spinning shuriken right about there. And again, if you want to uh, change the grid, you can go over here. So I'm going to do that. And place it right there so it touches the ground like that. And if you want to have like regular spikes, they're in these uh, normal folders. So put some spikes over here. The new folder is just for the new stuff that is in this engine. So let's put some spikes over there. Now I actually changed my mind here. I'm going to do something else here. And if you want to edit what you've just done, and I want to delete these blocks, well, I can't delete these tiles. That's because you need to be on the correct menu in the room editor. So I'm going to switch to tiles and now I can delete the tiles, but I can't delete the uh, blocks. So you need to be on the correct menu. So I'm going to change it to this instead. And I've decided I want to put an 8-bit object, the chompy trap. You can just put that down. And right here, I'm going to have a toggle block, but I'm going to have it to be empty, the empty version. So since I can't reach this over here, I'll have to use these blocks, but they're empty right now. So I'm going to have to shoot ones, and then I can jump on top of them and move up. Let's have some speed, a like kind of a speed section here, which you have to move fast for. So let's have a bunch of spikes in a row, normally Something like this would not be possible, but because we're fast, it would be totally fine. And then we just need to remember to turn the player back to normal. Now on this drop, I'm going to have a dockhead swapper. So you need to swap to dockhead and then do some cool little drop here. Something like, let's just place some random spikes. Uh, level design takes a lot of work. Don't rush it. Just take your time with level design. And remember to actually test what you're making. And let's also put a block right there. Remember to put a tile there as well. So the player knows that there's a block there. Otherwise they will be invisible. And then I'm going to place a save at the start. Now remember, I can just shoot the save from here. So I'm going to put a bullet blocker, which is right here. A save blocker. I'm going to put that right there. This object isn't actually visible, so you won't see this square in the game. But you'll notice it when you try to shoot from here because you can't shoot it. And that is our level. Uh, before we play this, let us actually change the background. So let's go to the background tab. And right here you can... Uh, there are eight different backgrounds you can have. You can choose just a plain old color. So if you want to go for like a dark kind of color, something like that, or you can choose an image. And I don't want to fill the room with that, so we're going to have no background. It's going to have this color. All right, let's play our room. All right, let's open up the game, start a new file, and we'll move in this warp, because that's where your stage is. And there we go. We already have a room. I did no coding whatsoever, I just placed things, and we already have a level. You can jump over that, can't shoot through this, 
Got a shoot to actually activate this, these blocks. We have this crocodile mouth thing. It's gotta go fast there. It's actually go as faster than, than I thought. Huh. And we're gonna switch to Duck Kid. That's actually a pretty tough drop. Probably should have put a save there. That's, this is why you need to test your uh, levels to make sure they're actually fair. So I'm just gonna use uh, insert to save myself here. Grab this. But of course, there's no exit. So we will just fall and die. Let's sort that out and make a second room. All right, so let's make a second room. To do that, we're not gonna press the uh, create room button, wherever that is. I don't remember, yeah, right here. Do not press this button. Instead, we're going to right click our template and click duplicate. And then move this down to our folder there. I'm gonna name this R my stage two. So right here we have a second room. We're gonna just place a couple blocks again. We're gonna place some tiles on top of those blocks. And then to make the player actually appear here, we're gonna place a object player start. Don't ever place the object player by the way. Just the object player start. So now the game knows when I appear in this, in this room, uh, it'll spawn me right here. Okay, so let's actually connect these rooms together. So we're gonna be going into warps. You can choose the object warp next and just put it like that, which will warp you to the next room. However, uh, I'm gonna show how creation code works. Now, if, before you freak out, don't please don't be afraid of creation code. It is nowhere near like actual coding, I guess. Creation code is very, very simple. And it's very important if you want to, for instance, customize this shuriken object. It's always spinning the same direction. I can't change it unless I de delve a little bit into creation code. All right, so with creation code, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be placing a regular warp here. Now the game won't actually know where to put me. So to change that, we're going to go right click the object and then press edit object. And you'll see the events and the actions are empty. That is because it's set to a parent. So we're gonna be checking the parent instead. So it says OB OBJ room changer. So let's go into that. Let's find it. Warps, OBJ room changer. All right, right here. So we're only gonna be checking the create event. And the create event happens when the room is created. So whenever you press R. And we're gonna be double clicking this. All right, so here's the code window. And these right here are called, called variables. And these are the things that you will change in order to customize the specific uh, instance of your object. So you won't just have the same object do the same thing every time you place it. And so we can actually tell the game where to put us when we enter the warp. Uh, the objects have these comments. So comments are the ones in green. That means the game won't actually execute what is said in the comment, which is there to help you out. So it says change these in creation code. Okay, so warp X and warp Y we're not interested in because we already have a object player start, if you remember right here. We have this object right here, so the we won't need to change that. So what we're interested in is room two. Now, we're not gonna change this right here. Instead, we're going to change it in creation code. So we're gonna close this. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be right-clicking this warp and click creation code. So what creation code does, it allows you to set the create event to something specific for just that instance of that object. Uh, to put it into English, say we had uh, two warps. Let's say we had a warp over here. 
or like a secret or something. Well, if we change the actual object, uh, both of these will warp you to the room we set the object to. But if we change the creation code, we can have this one warp to one room and this one warp to another, a different room. So it allows you to customize. So let's open the creation code again. So if you remember, the variable that we wanted to change was called room2. So let's type that in, room2. Now, the capitalization is also important, don't forget that. And if you ever forget what the variable is called, you can just up open the object again. Let's say equals, and then let's put in our room name, which was r my stage 2 So this will actually change the uh, create event to instead of sending me to uh, our templates it will actually send me to here instead let's click OK so now if we run the game again I'm going to enable God mode here now when we enter this warp it will send us to the correct place now right here we can see we have like gaps so you have to like go right into warp so instead of having to place another object ed edit the creation code do that several times what you can do instead is you can select control c control v and that will create another copy of this object with the creation code so let's do that so now there's three warps here and you can hover over the object and it will show the creation code and if you hold c it will highlight or if you press c rather it will highlight all the objects in your room that have creation code. So if you ever forget, you can press C. Now, a bunch of these objects you can edit with creation code. For instance, if I wanted to make this shuriken spin the other way, which is actually what I wanted from the start, again, we're going to play press edit object. And let's see, in the create event, you can ignore the other events. Double click the code, and it says image angle speed equals 2. So this is the variable that we want to change, but don't change it here. Instead, we're going to close this and we're going to be opening the creation code. And here, we're going to be changing it to image angle speed equals minus two, because we wanted to rotate in the, in, the, in the other direction. Like so, spinning the correct direction. And there we go. That is our level. And then you can keep making from here. You can open the next stage, make a new level, and then set the creation code in your warp. But yes, we can just keep editing here and just keep making. All right, and that's everything. If you need more help, like navigating GameMaker, I highly recommend you check out Clayson's written tutorial. That tutorial is really, really good. And feel free to also ask people in the discord and don't be afraid of asking uh, there's no such thing as stupid questions just just ask and people are very willing to help you out our community is great with that all right that's all thank you for watching and happy game making